Hi, this is Andrew Reversa with Impact Soundworks. And today I'm going to be presenting the first episode of Impact Soundworks Academy. This is a new free series on YouTube where we're gonna be talking about a wide variety of topics that are relevant to people in the music industry. Composition, production, business, everything from 100 level stuff to really advanced topics that even full-time professionals should be able to enjoy and appreciate. We're gonna be involving a lot of different tutors, teachers, and experts in these videos. And uh, today I'm gonna to be talking about music business in our 100 level course on the topic. This particular video is all about how to get started building your career as an artist. Now, if you've already been releasing music for a while, if you're in a band, if you already have a website, social media presence, don't pause the video yet because there still might be things here that you'll find useful. The key takeaway that I want you to get from this video is how you can either start or improve your career as an artist, connecting with people in a way that is relevant to both of you, that's effective, and that won't burn you out. That's something that can be very uh, common, especially for solo creators. Uh, it's easy to overextend, it's easy to burn out. So we wanna talk about the things that are effective that aren't going to require too much of your time. So the first thing, this is more of a step zero, is think about how you want to be perceived by your audience. And what I mean by that is not a gimmick or even a hook exactly, but you wanna think what is something that my audience can relate to when they hear my music, they see my artist profile page. For example, if they spend 10 seconds on your page, they click on a song, they see your portrait, uh, are they going to know what you're all about? Are you an epic music composer? Are you a metal musician? Are you somebody that does video game and anime covers on YouTube? Are you somebody that's a virtuoso with your instrument? Maybe you're an amazing violin player or a guitarist or a fiddle player or a woodwind player. That should be immediately apparent when people visit your page and start listening to your music. And the reason that this is important and why it doesn't have to be totally unique is because people like to relate to what they already know. So for example, a fan of epic music is gonna be thinking about artists like Two Steps From Hell. So if you can give the impression that, hey, you're something like Two Steps From Hell, then that's going to be a great connection. Once people have some kind of foothold where, where they can say, I have some idea of what this person, what this artist is all about, then you can start building a relationship with them. See, there's an audience for every kind of music out there, uh, whether you're doing hip hop music or old school breakbeat music or trance or you know soft choral music, there's an audience for all of those things. And that audience already exists. You just need to connect with them. You're not trying to bring in metal fans to listen to your soft, ambient, atmospheric, new age music. It's more about connecting to the people that are already predisposed to liking what you're creating. So now let's get on to the next step, which is building a website for yourself. Now, this isn't a course about building websites, but the main thing I wanna talk about here is how important it is to have a site that you have total control over. The problem with Facebook and Instagram, Twitter and all that is that you don't have full control over what's presented, how it's presented and who is seeing it. You could be posting on YouTube and Facebook every day, but that's only gonna be seen by the people that the algorithm wants to see that content. And that algorithm can change. It can be very frustrating when it does change. And so having a sort of a home base where you know what you're posting, you know how it's gonna be displayed, Nobody else is going to be messing with the design. That is so important. Rather than going into a whole design course, I'll just say, if you don't have a website, check out WordPress and free WordPress themes that cost nothing to get started with. You don't need to have any coding knowledge. Free HTML5 themes, and you can use a service that costs you know five bucks a month to get website hosting. Or if you're willing to pay a little bit of money, you could look into something like Squarespace or Wix for website hosting and they have sort of drag and drop design services there so you can very easily create a site that matches your personality. So this can be a super simple site. It can be a single page with just a little bit of information about you and some key links. But the most important thing here relates to the next action item, which is building a mailing list. The truth is, and I can say this from having run a mailing list for myself for 16 years as of the making of this video and 13 years for Impact Soundworks, mailing lists are the best way to reach people. Uh, now I'm not talking about spam. Obviously we're not buying email addresses here. Everybody has an email address. 
you need an email address to sign up for all those social media services. So that means everybody is checking their email every day. And when you send an email to that list, you're guaranteed to reach a pretty big percentage of those people. Everybody gets a lot of email every day, but if they see your name in their inbox and they know that they signed up for your list, then there's a good chance they're gonna click on it. Probably 30, 40% of them, maybe even more. We can talk about email strategy in much more detail in a later video. But for now, I'll give you some simple, small action items to get started. One is that you can use a free service like MailChimp to start your list. And they also give you the ability to embed a signup form on a website like WordPress or Squarespace or Wix or anything like that. Once you have your list created, you can send the link around to your friends, your family, or any fans that you already know. You can post it on your Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anything you already have. The most important thing here is that you want it to be organic. You absolutely do not want to add people that are just in your address book. These need to be people that are signing up because they want to hear from you. And those people are going to be your fans that you build on for years to come. With the caveat that we're doing the full strategy in the later video, you can start by just emailing maybe once a month or so and tell people what you're up to. If you've got some new music, if you've got an exciting new project, maybe you've done something new in your studio, anything like that, you can talk about in your email, and it should come from you as a person, written in the first person. So you don't wanna talk about yourself like you're a major label or anything like that. You just wanna be personal and connect with that audience to remind them that you're around and you're being a creative person. So next, I've already mentioned social media a few times, but let's talk about what that really means for you as an artist. Now, most people have at least one social network that they're on every day, whether that's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or something else. The exact network that you're on doesn't matter as much as picking one that you're good at and focusing your attention on that. If you get really popular or you really just find yourself with way too much time on your hands and you wanna tackle a few things at a time, that's fine, but I highly recommend just picking one, updating that maybe once a week, start small, that's gonna give you the best results. So for example, if you're on YouTube, trying to put up at least one new song a week, or if you're somebody that does covers, even if you don't have a professionally shot video and it's just you, know, you performing in front of the camera with very simple editing, any kind of content like that, as long as it's posted regularly, like once a week or once every two weeks, that's going to help build your audience on that platform. Personally, I think YouTube is a pretty good starting point and the reason for that is because the YouTube algorithm over time is generally going to help you out. If you're on Facebook and you make a post and you have your music in it, Facebook isn't generally going to show that post to many people. In fact, it's not even going to show it to your full audience. On YouTube, if you make a video of something and it gets more popular, that video is going to be shown to a wider and wider and wider audience over time without you doing anything at all. So uh, YouTube can be very powerful for that. As vexing and frustrating as that algorithm is, it can also be really useful if you're starting out and you're trying to get that organic growth. So the next action item is that you want to write music for fun, not just for a project, not just because you're getting paid to write it, but something that you're passionate about. And secondly, you wanna get that music out to as many people as possible through as many platforms as possible. I saw this so many times as a college professor. Students would be close to graduation and they'd basically have no portfolio at all aside from their student projects. And that's something that really separated, uh, in my mind, the people that uh, were going to become successful from the people that were going to struggle a little bit with their careers as musicians. So let's say you've been a composer for a couple of years or maybe even a couple decades, a lot of people just don't put their music out there as soundtrack releases or album releases. And it's a shame because there is an audience for that music. You might think there's a lot of music out there, you know, nobody's gonna listen to my old stuff, nobody's gonna care, and you might be right. But the thing is, you increase your chances of people becoming a fan by releasing more music, as long as it's not, you know, unfinished, unmixed, unmastered stuff. If it's finished music, then put it out there. Don't wait for your music to be at a certain level. If you're a student or if you're starting out and you feel like, man, you know, my music, it's just not that great, that's okay. If you put your passion into it, if it's something that you care about, then it's worth releasing to the world. And it's certainly worth putting on platforms like Spotify and Apple Music and all that. So in terms of how to do that, I'm gonna give two simple sub action items and recommendations. The first one is to put your music on Bandcamp. Bandcamp is a wonderful platform for all different genres of music. Uh, they have a very favorable royalty cut. 
You have complete control over uh, the music that's on there, the artwork. You can even put merchandise on there if you want, like vinyls and t-shirts. And overall, it's a great platform for indie artists. So there's absolutely no reason not to use Bandcamp. Everybody should be using it. And it even has a little bit of social uh, elements to it with the recommendation and review system. Sign up for Bandcamp and get your music on there first. Then you wanna use an aggregator that's going to put your music on all the other platforms like Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Google Play, and all that. Personally, I've been using CD Baby since 2004 or so. So you could definitely say I'm loyal to them. They take a pretty small cut, about 9% of what they get. If you were to sell a song for a dollar, let's say, and CD Baby gets 70 cents, they take 9% of that 70 cents, not 9% of a dollar. And they will get your music onto all of those platforms, simple and easy. Now there are other aggregators like DistroKid and TuneCore. My personal experience, and I have no stake in the company, I get nothing for saying this, is that CD Baby has good customer support. They've been around for a while. I trust them and it's pretty easy to use. So that's my recommendation. So let's review. What are the starting steps that you can use as an artist to get your career going, start connecting to fans as soon as possible? The first thing is thinking about that initial impression and perception of you as an artist. Are you giving the impression that you are an EDM or club artist, a hip hop artist, a cerebral film composer, an epic metal artist? Think about that first perception and how that plays into your social media, your photos, portraits, album art, and the first songs that people hear on your uh, different players. The next thing, build a simple website for yourself. It can be like a one page thing, but the most important thing is that you have control over it and it has a link to your mailing list. Start that mailing list with, you know, mom and dad, brothers and sisters, people you went to school with. That mailing list is something that you're gonna build on over time and it's gonna provide huge value to your career and it's gonna provide value to the people that care about you because it's the most reliable way to connect with them. Then social media is important too, but choose your battles, pick one that you can do well, update it regularly, keep it simple if you have to, and then only if and when you have tons and tons of spare time and things are going really well, should you start adding other platforms into the mix. Finally, write music for fun because you care about it, because you're passionate about it, and release that music to everybody on every platform. I've used these strategies myself. I've seen plenty of other friends, people that kind of started about the same time I did, use them and become very successful over time. And uh, these are really the techniques that can give you the bedrock foundation of being a successful solo artist with a career that brings in revenue and income over time that you can rely on. Remember, today it's not about getting that big viral hit or getting a major label deal. You know, those things are possible, but it's like winning the lottery. You can't rely on it. Today, building a career as an artist is all about organic, steady growth. Sometimes you're not gonna see results for months or maybe even years of just steadily releasing music, putting out videos, putting out posts, updating your site, building your mailing list. These things, that it's not glamorous, but these strategies work. People are using them all over the world to become very successful independent artists and composers. So I think you can take those things and you can apply them to your career, whether you're just a student in college, whether you're somebody that's been doing this part-time for years, or whether you're a composer that's had their name in many projects, but hasn't released things under their own name, you know, on these platforms like Bandcamp and Spotify. I hope you found this video informative. Please tell us what you think in the comments below. Now, of course, we'd appreciate liking and subscribing to show us that you like this kind of content. And thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.